Right, so let's start by having a look at the 3DS XL. Now, I really do like the buttons and the joystick on this device. They are both responsive and quite comfortable. However, on the other hand, the screen really isn't up to par. Not only is the resolution abysmally low, but the saturation is really, really bad and the colours just do not pop. Having said that, there are advantages to having two screens. It allows you to display more data when playing games and just gives you more real estate. So, that's a quick look at the 3DS. Now let's have a look at the PlayStation Vita. Right, so straight away you should be able to notice that the screen really does pop. The colours are vivid and the resolution is much higher than that of the 3DS. Having said that though, it's still not up to scratch with today's smartphones, being only a 960 by 544 display panel. Similar to the 3DS, the buttons and joysticks really are very nice indeed. Right, so let's have a look at the graphics that each system can output. The game we are playing here is Monster Hunter 3 Ultima and is probably one of the best looking games on the system. As you can see, the models and lighting do look very high quality and nearly rival the console level. The resolution on the other hand is poor and really does get in the way of the gaming experience. Not only are you constantly reminded of it by the jagged edges you see during gameplay, but the text is often difficult to read. The graphics of this game are actually very similar to that of Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, which is a PSP game, so not exactly impressive considering that device was released about 8 years ago. So here we have the Vita playing Final Fantasy X HD. Although this is probably not the most visually impressive game for the Vita, it does give a good example of what it can do. This is based off a PS2 game, so it's already one step ahead of the 3DS, and that's not taking into account the remastered visuals, improved audio, and just tons of bonus content. This is very, very similar to the PS3 version of the game. Next, a quick look at the web browsing performance on both devices. As you can see, the Vita offers a cleaner interface, and generally speaking is quicker than what the 3DS has to offer. The improved screen resolution also helps when browsing the web, as it just increases the readability of your text. So in this test I'm going to be searching the same thing on Google on both devices and see which one brings up the search results faster. As you can see, typing on the 3DS is a bit more of a pain as you have to sort of take out the stylus due to the resistive touchscreen on the bottom. On the Vita, however, you can simply use the on-screen keyboard like you would with your smartphone or other tablet. As a result, it is easier and quicker to type on the PlayStation Vita. So, in our search test, you can see that the Vita is coming up way faster than the 3DS. This is probably due to a combination of better hardware and better optimised software. So, next up, let's have a look at the apps available on the devices. For this test, I'm going to use the YouTube app, as it summarises my experiences on both devices pretty well. So again, as you can see, the Vita comes up much quicker, the loading is faster, and the interface is cleaner. When using both side by side, it is quite clear that you're using an inferior product with the 3DS. This is pretty much the same whichever app you try, whether it be Hulu, Netflix, or just the general messaging app. Similar to the previous test, I'm going to be searching the same thing on both devices and seeing which one comes up faster. We'll also have a quick look at the video quality on both devices to see if there's a big difference. I'll just say it straight away, I don't recommend buying any of these devices for their YouTube capabilities. The app ecosystems on the 3DS and PS Vita are nowhere near as developed as those on, say, Android and iOS. And as a result, the quality and quantity of the apps available is much less. So as you can see, the Vita is loading things up much quicker than the 3DS. Not only are the videos faster, but also the search results are quicker. Hopefully you'll be able to see from the video that the quality on the PS Vita screen is better, just thanks to the higher resolution and the OLED display. However, the 3DS does have a couple of benefits here. You can actually use the hinge to actually adjust the angle of the screen, which means if you're sitting at a weird or different angle, you can still watch quite easily on the 3DS. On top of that, the bottom screen is very useful as it gives you quick access to comments, related videos and more information. To retrieve this on the Vita, you have to exit the video. And finally, a quick look at the stores available on the 3DS and PS Vita. Quite frankly, the 3DS eShop is a mess. It's clunky, difficult to navigate and just not very user friendly in general. It's actually quite difficult to find things you're looking for. And on top of that, the fact that it's so slow just makes it a real pain to use. Now this isn't exactly helped by my currently quite poor internet connection, but even when the internet connection is strong, the 3DS eShop never really works that well. So, on the PlayStation Vita, we have the PSN store. 
It's safe to say this is a significant improvement from the 3DS. The content is organised into three main categories, game, video and PlayStation Mobile, and within them there's actually subcategories which make things very easy to find. The search feature also works very well, and there's a sense of integration with other systems whenever you're using it. It also helps that prices are lower. And just to finish off, here are my thoughts about the future of both devices. The 3DS has a long healthy future in front of it. Sales of the device were significantly boosted by large franchises such as Mario and Monster Hunter. The 3DS actually became the best selling console out of both handhelds and home consoles of 2013. This large user install base gives developers a large incentive to develop for the device, and we can expect a flurry of new content throughout the years to come. The PlayStation Vita, on the other hand, has a much less certain future. We're now pretty sure that it's too late for the PlayStation Vita to sort of reach mass market appeal. However, it's not too late for it to become a successful console. The large-scale shift from Sony to promote indie games for the PlayStation Vita has been a success. Not only has it resulted in higher sales figures, but it's created some real gems that can only be enjoyed on the system. On top of that, the PS Vita has one of the highest adoption rates of any console ever meaning that people absolutely love the device, and those who own it purchase loads of content for it. I guess you could say I'm among those people, because whenever a game is released multi-platform, the Vita is always the first platform I would like to own it on. It's the only device in the world that can reproduce the console quality graphics, have the console quality games, and be able to take them on the go. So, thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and subscribe for more.